Hello and welcome to the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. I'm your host, Doug Ray, and I appreciate you spending some of your weekend with us. My question this morning is, do you want to leave your family loving memories or major problems? I'm pretty sure I know your answer, but what do you need to do to accomplish that task? We're going to be diving into the details in today's show, but before I get started, Bryce is again here in the studio with me. What's going on, Bryce? Happy Father's Day, Doug. Absolutely, man. You too. Thank you. And I've enjoyed having your daughter work with us some this summer. She's been a big help. Yeah, I think she has, and it's always nice to be able to work with family, and uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there as well. So for those of you who are new to our show, Ray Financial and the Wealth Guardians is a local independent firm that works with folks within seven to ten years from retirement as well as those folks who've already retired. And most people don't know how to turn their retirement savings accounts into you know, a steady flow of good old retirement income once they stop drawing that paycheck at retirement. You know, I focus my practice on retirement income planning, and I've been doing it for 20 years. History shows there's two powerful truths when it comes to finances in retirement. Number one, what got you to retirement will not necessarily get you through retirement. And number two, losses mean more than gains in retirement once you aren't drawing that paycheck. Very true, Doug. And I want to remind everybody out there that our firm practices as fiduciaries, which means we make recommendations that are in your best interest, not ours. Before we get started, as always, I want to salute our military, our first responders. Thank you, folks, for everything you do for us, the sacrifices you make and the sacrifices your families make. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. Here, here. And today we are going to get into the key areas of proper end of life planning that you need to be aware of so that you leave your family solid, loving memories instead of just major problems. Yeah, Bryce, you know, there was a recent ARP survey that says 75 percent said that not being able to communicate their wishes would be worse than death. Yet less than half of those have taken steps to ensure their wishes could be carried out. You know, I, I certainly understand that death is not an easy topic to discuss, but, you know, proper end of life planning really can mean the difference between leaving a, a loving memory instead of a major problem. And I'm sure most people want to leave those loving memories. Well, I don't know, Doug. There, there may be a few people out there who may want to get some type of revenge or leave some problems behind. Well, maybe, but hopefully not many of our listeners. So let's focus on the ones that want to leave those loving memories. Right. I mean, those are the ones we can actually help anyway. So, All right. Let's, let's, uh, let's start off by describing what an estate is. A person's estate consists of all the personal belongings, assets, buildings, business holdings, financial resources, everything they own. It can include real property, possessions, investments, interest in a corporation, rights to certain assets or holdings. Estate planning is the process of accounting for these items and then arranging for the distribution of those assets in order to achieve the wishes of the estate owner. Good estate planning will determine what happens to your property, who'll get it, and where it will go, and how it's going to happen. You can transfer assets to a spouse, children, friends, a charity, and the planning allows control over these assets when you die and assign a guardian or a custodian to help, you know, a minor or a disabled person. It's a very important note here. You know, an estate plan could uh, considerably reduce possible taxes and a fees associated with probate and the distribution of those assets. Unfortunately, though, doing all this isn't easy. There are specific types of legal documents that come into play, such as wills, trusts, power of attorney, beneficiary forms, and so on. In addition, you have to evaluate and consider tax issues and a financial responsibility for the heirs as well. And I can't emphasize strongly enough the benefits of estate planning can be invaluable and can certainly help you leave the loving memories, but instead of a major problem. And I experienced that firsthand back in 2006. It was June 26th. My very best friend, Rodney, 
died suddenly of a massive heart attack. He and his family, his wife and their two children, were on a family vacation in, in Key West. And Rod had a massive heart attack and passed away, age 49. Rodney had a very successful REMAX office in Fayetteville at the time. And ironically, he and Teresa were just in the process of getting all their legal documents set up. Unfortunately, they hadn't got them signed and, you know, documented and everything that you need to do to, to put them in place. So Rodney died in test state as a business owner, which meant immediately everything was frozen. So instead of leaving a loving memory, Rodney left a lot of major problems behind for his wife. The next couple years were a nightmare, a major nightmare. So maybe you'll learn some things today to keep that from happening to you. Yeah, that is a tough one, Doug. Um, sorry about your friend having had that happen. Uh, before you were getting the story, you were mentioning that in order to leave loving memories instead of major problems like Rodney did, the first factor that needs to be addressed is legal documents. Now, legal documents consist of items like wills, trusts, powers of attorney. Um, let's start with the most well-known legal document, which is a will. Well, Bryce, since you bring that up, why don't you tell all of our, our listeners about those documents? Okay. Uh, a will is a document in which a person specifies the method to be applied in the management and distribution of his or her estate after death. I and mean, that's the definition of a will. It enables a person to select their heirs rather than allowing the state laws of descent and distribution to choose the heirs for them. It also allows a person to decide which individual could best serve as the executor of the estate. The executor distributes the property fairly to the beneficiaries while protecting their interests rather than allowing a court to appoint some stranger to serve as administrator. And perhaps most importantly, it safeguards a person's right to select an individual to serve as guardian to raise young children in the event of a premature death. That's a will. Now, let's move on. The next type of legal document is a trust. Now, there are a, a lot of types of trusts. The most popular type of trust when you're talking about estate planning is a revocable living trust. Now, a lot of people take these out instead of a will to gain additional benefits. And the two main benefits to a revocable living trust are, one, to avoid probate, and two, to maintain privacy. A couple of additional points to consider regarding revocable living trusts. First, many people think that if they have a revocable living trust, then they do not need a will. And folks, this is not the case. A revocable living trust takes the place of a will in some circumstances, but you still need a will because what can happen is this. Some things are not always put into the trust or you, you just didn't have time to get things into the trust prior to passing away. So most revocable living trusts come with what is called a pour-over will, where it captures things that are not owned by the revocable living trust, thus ensuring things will go to the proper people, as obviously any of us would want. So you want to make sure you have what they call that pour-over will if you have a revocable living trust. It's that catch-all to make sure everything is distributed correctly at the time of your passing. And secondly, you have to be careful about transferring certain assets into a trust. Life insurance, for example, IRAs and annuities, they avoid probate automatically, so you don't need the revocable living trust for these. Plus, there can be some major tax issues by moving these assets into the trust. Now, having said all that, another key document in estate planning is called a durable power of financial attorney and durable power of health attorney. These documents allow you to appoint someone to make decisions for you when you're unable to do so yourself. As so a durable power of financial attorney, that allows someone to handle financial affairs, and a durable power of health attorney allows someone to make health care decisions for you. And these are truly, truly important documents to have. So you want to make sure if you don't have these power of attorney's documents, you need to get them. A will, trust, and power of attorney forms are 
really vital forms in the effort to leave loving memories instead of problems. Well, thanks, Bryce. That's that's really good stuff. Yeah, it really is truly helpful information, Doug. And we know that from our experience that many people believe that a will and or a trust is sufficient. That's all you need for estate planning. And although it's, it's obviously very important, as we just explained, it may not be the best place to record personal preferences and to explain things in specific detail. What goes along very well with a will and a trust is what's called a letter of instruction. Doug, talk to us about that. Yeah, Bryce, you're right. It, it, it does go well with it, but it's not a legally binding document. But it does provide assistance and guidance to those loved ones. You can use it to record information about important documents such as will, power of attorney, your insurance policies, a tax return. It provides ways to communicate your preferences for funeral, burial arrangements, uh, and who to notify at your death. You know, a few items that may go into a letter of instruction are funeral and burial preferences, location of family records, bank accounts, safety deposit box, financial paperwork, insurance policies, tax returns. You know, just about anything you can think of, you can put in there. And it's important to keep that letter of instruction in a place that's easily accessible. The more detailed you are, the simpler and easier things will be on your family and your wishes will be carried out as you want them to be. Again, it's in an effort to leave a loving memory instead of a major problem. And Doug, you know, I, I can't tell you, you know this as well as I do, how many clients come into us to get some financial planning done that have never had a will, have never had a power of attorney done. And, you know, we know from our experience in our practice how important it is to have these documents in place, not just having the right investments or the right assets in the right places, but you have to have all these documents as well. And people just don't understand that. And while we're not uh, state attorneys ourselves, we know the importance of having these items in place. Doug, we, you know a lot of elder law state attorneys in this area, in the triad area, that we can refer clients to. Yeah, we do, and we have in the past. And, uh, you know, if you're out there listening to the show and you think maybe you need to talk to somebody and you don't know who, just pick up the phone and give us a call, 336-391-3409, and we'll give you some names to call. They'll, they're good people, and they'll they'll be glad to help you. Yeah, we want to, we want to help you out on all facets of your financial planning and this truly is one of them there's not too many people out there who can do everything at one time and we certainly can't because like i said we're not attorneys but we understand the importance of it and how it plays a role in your overall financial planning so again our website is www.thewealthguardians.com and you can reach out to us we'd be happy to hear from you at 336-391-3409 right now we're up against a quick break but stay tuned We will be right back. If you like what you're hearing, consider please liking us on our Wealth Guardians Radio Facebook page. And welcome back to the Wealth Guardians Radio Show. We help our clients retire the job, but not the paycheck. And for listeners who are five to seven years from retirement and want to confirm they're making the best decisions for retirement, we offer a no-cost, no-obligation second opinion to make sure you are indeed on the right path. Please give us a call at 336 391 3409. Now, this week's show is about leaving memories, not problems. So let's jump right back in. We spent the first segment outlining some different legal documents, and I'm guessing most folks haven't heard of this one, but another tool that you can use that can assist with leaving loving memories for your family instead of major problems is the use of a funeral trust. Doug, explain that one to us. Yeah, Bryce, there's this, uh, it's a couple, three, maybe four weeks right after death that can be kind of a tricky little uh, time frame financially. You know, the common problem that can occur right then is paying for the funeral and some other related expenses that crop up. And many times assets are frozen until the legal documents and the insurance can get processed. And this can take, you know, 30 days. Right. Last year, this is a prime example, uh, my father-in-law passed away in August, and, and my wife, Sherry, well, she was a uh, power of attorney, and, and she also was the executrix of the estate. 
Well, immediately after his passing, there were a few bills that were due, but of course, you know, things were frozen. Now, my wife, being quick on her feet, just took his credit card and used that. Now, that may not be exactly kosher. There's really better ways to do it. You know, the family has to come up with money to pay for the funeral themselves out of pocket. We certainly could have done that, but then that creates another whole host of problems. you got to get reimbursed, and that's got to go through the whole uh, system and everything. So a simple way to prevent this issue is with a funeral trust. A funeral trust is a trust you can create for financial expenses. Single premium life insurance policy that's offered by a select group of insurance companies. And the policy itself is owned by your funeral trust. It offers several benefits that include tax-free benefits, instant availability, so you got that cash concern done with right there. It's fully transportable, and the proceeds can be used at any funeral home in any state. Excess benefits are paid to the estate of the insured, and these funds are protected from any creditors. These funds are probate-free, and it's no financial burden to survivors. It can be used for other expenses, not just the funeral. Funds are also protected from Medicaid spend-down. And a very high percentage of people do not own long-term care insurance. Many older adults are at risk of having their estates plundered if a need for long-term care should arise. A funeral trust is a legal way that you can safeguard some assets from nursing homes or Medicaid to pay for your final expenses. These funeral trusts are written for people up to 99 years of age, and they're guaranteed issue. There's no underwriting. You can purchase a funeral trust usually with any amount of money between $1,000 and $10,000. The law differs in, in you know, different states. Therefore, you, know, it's, you have to have a knowledgeable financial estate planner or estate planning lawyer to help you uh, set these uh, funeral trusts up. Again, these are very good documents for people who just want to set up and have burial expenses paid and keep things very clean and simple. It provides instant money for heirs to pay for funeral-related expenses versus dipping into their own pockets. And we're able to help with this if you like. If you want more information, just call us at 336-391-3409. Doug, that is really interesting and important concept there. I, I know almost no one thinks of that situation you just described until it's forced on them. So it's good to know there is a solution for that circumstance out there. Um, the next factor to consider in the goal of leaving loving memories instead of major problems is doing some beneficiary planning. Well, you'd think this is taken care of with the will or the trust, but that's just not the case with certain assets. You know, some assets only pass via a beneficiary designation. These would be assets that are like in IRAs, 401Ks, 403Bs, and other retirement savings vehicles. Also, life insurance and annuity accounts pass via a beneficiary designation. So all of these assets will go to your name beneficiary that you put and write on those lines. What makes this extremely important is it's imperative that you understand is that your name beneficiary overrides your will and trust. Let me say this again. The beneficiary designation overrides your will and trust. It's extremely important that you make sure you fill these out properly and you keep them updated. Let me give you a case in point. Several years ago, this very thing went all the way to the Supreme Court. A teacher in New York City had saved well over a million dollars in his 403B. He divorced. He never changed the beneficiary designation on his 403B. He remarried and then passed away. Now, who do you think got the money? Because his will and trust said everything should go to the second spouse. Well, the beneficiary designation said no. His ex-spouse, his first spouse, was the beneficiary of his 403B. 
Well, this case went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that beneficiary designations trump wills and trusts. So his ex-wife got over a million dollars of his 403B, and he totally disinherited his second wife and, and the children. Very important. Beneficiary planning is extremely important for avoiding some major costs and problems. You definitely want to put some thought into this, and there's several things to consider, such as the age of the beneficiary. You know, many policies and plans will not directly transfer assets to minors until a trustee or a guardian is approved by a court. The ability of the beneficiary to manage assets. You know, perhaps a trust needs to be set up in that person's name. That would be a better way uh, to direct the transfer. Pension plans. Unless waived by the spouse in writing, some states require a spouse be the primary beneficiary on the account. Naming contingent beneficiaries. This should be something that should happen always with the primary beneficiary. The contingent beneficiary would receive your assets if the primary beneficiary predeceases them. This is extremely important on your IRAs because that automatically sets the stretch provision in motion. Charitable desires. You can name churches, charities, nonprofits, any charitable organization you want to as a beneficiary. And I'll say it again. Make sure your beneficiary designations are accurately filled out with the proper people named and are up to date at all times in order to avoid any nightmare scenarios. Might be a good advice if uh, you have a financial advisor that does annual reviews. Maybe make note of this and review your beneficiary designations along, along with your account performance. At least do that once or twice, maybe every third year or so. Sounds good, Doug. That moves us on to our last point today and the goal of leaving loving memories instead of major problems, which is understanding tax ramifications. There's a lot to this one. Yeah, this is a big one, and many people forget uh, or don't even think about the tax situation. As you know, one way to really get someone upset is to start talking about taxes. Don't go there, Doug. I'm warning you. Well, imagine how upset your family or your beneficiary would be inheriting a huge tax bill. Yep. That's what's so important about understanding tax ramifications because some assets pass on tax-free and some are partially taxable and some are fully taxable. So you don't want to leave someone a major tax problem if you can prevent it. That's why you need to understand which types of assets you own will pass tax-free, which assets pass on a full taxable basis, and which ones are partially taxable. So let me give you some examples. So if you leave an IRA or other retirement assets to someone, it could be fully taxable to that beneficiary. Now, if you know about this, and if the beneficiary knows about this, there's things that can be done to prevent that IRA from being fully taxable. I mentioned early on in the program, adding contingent beneficiaries to the IRA makes this a stretch IRA. That means they don't have to take the money out lump sum in one year. They can spread it out over their life lifetime and even use those IRAs for their own uh, retirement assets. There are tools available that help spread that tax burden out over a period of time. However, things have to be done with a certain time period and the proper documents have to be used. Otherwise, it's a major tax problem right away. So if you can prevent a huge tax bill in one year, and you can, but there's planning that's required in order to do so. Bryce, I'll give you a case in point. A couple years before you joined the firm, I got a call from somebody. Uh, they had uh, their father had a five hundred thousand dollar IRA, and um, he had left it to the estate versus uh, uh, putting the beneficiaries uh, on on there. And basically, what this did is it wiped out the stretch provision entirely. He didn't have it set up as an IRA trust; it just went directly to the estate, and absolutely nothing uh, that they could do post death wow. uh, to change that. So right then and there, half a million dollars. Uh, in that one year was was fully taxable and eaten up by the feds in the state. So uh, 
Folks, please uh, take some of these uh, case studies we give you every week. And, uh, you know, if you think it fits your situation uh, and you want to remedy the, uh, your situation, call us at 336-391-3409. And, Doug, that, that story right there shows that the benefits of estate planning are absolutely immeasurable and can help you leave more to your loved ones or organizations close to your heart. Uh, to accomplish this, everyone out there, you need to work with a qualified and experienced retirement specialist to make sure that your planning is set up the absolute best way for your unique and specific situation. It'll keep your retirement nest egg safe and sound and help leave loving memories, not major problems. Um, in closing, uh, for today's show, we want to wish everyone out there a happy Father's Day weekend. Uh, Doug, like you mentioned, every situation is unique and why we like to sit down for a no cost, no obligation, second opinion and review with our clients. Folks, see if we can identify areas where we can offer additional options, more tax efficiency, social security optimization. Our website is www.thewealthguardians.com. Our phone number is 336 391 Three four zero nine. Let us show you to how to retire the job and keep the paycheck. Everybody out there, happy Father's Day. Have a good weekend. We look forward to talking to you next weekend as well. Thanks for listening.